Hey everyone, this is uh, Bridget Rays, and I'm back with another stylish tip for you, and I'm here with uh, my intern, Kathleen. She's back for another week. She hasn't run away yet. How are you doing, Kathleen? I'm great. How are yeah. you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm having a bad hair day today. Oh. Well, I, I feel a little Carol Brady from the <laughs> mullet years on the Brady Bunch. I just, I'm about a week, I'm trying to wait one more week to get my hair cut before I travel, and I just feel like I have a mullet. So, do I look like I have a mullet? doesn't look as bad as you think. <laughs> so what you're saying is it doesn't look great. <laughs> I know. I'm just a little overgrown today. It's a problem when you have short hair. So no. I don't I don't look like Carol. Like, I don't look like Carol Brady from the mullet years. No, no, no. All right. Okay. So bear with me, everyone. Um, speaking of, uh, of, of looks, um, I have to talk about something. I told you earlier. So J. Crew has a size triple zero now. Did you hear about this? They're going to have a triple zero. That's terrible. Yeah, it's weird. And so what I'm more upset about, though, is the way women are responding to this. Um, in particular, I got it. Uh, I found out about this because one of my very good friends, who is a client of mine, uh, posted this on my Facebook wall, my personal page. And she wrote something that really bugged me. Bugged me, bugged me. She said, why does the size triple zero bother me so much? I feel bad about my body when I see a size triple zero, even though I know there are many women out there who need this size. Alternatively, when I see a double XL, I thank God I don't wear that and ultimately feel better about myself. Ugh, I don't like my thinking. I don't like her thinking either. Mm. Do you like her thinking? Mm. Not so much. Yeah. You know why I don't like her thinking? Because I know her. And I know that she is one of the finest people I've ever met. She's one of the kindest, nicest. She's a wonderful mother. She's a wonderful um, wife. She has an amazing family. Um, she has devoted most of her, since being married and having children, most of her time towards community work, um, volunteerism. And here she is judging herself as a person based on whether or not she can wear a certain size or not. And I think that that is what bugs me so much is that she's willing to think less of herself because her body is the size she might not want it to be. And I kind of feel like, you know, as someone who really likes her, don't beat up the person I care about. Like, I feel, I feel like, hey, leave my really good special friend who I really care about alone. Like, this is not fair. And I think that it's so common with women to beat themselves up or put so much value in the size of their, the size that they wear. But um, I think most women know this. There's absolutely no standardization in fashion. You knew this, right, Kathleen? Right. Right. So there's no, there's no actual standard size triple zero and there's no standard size eight. And a size eight for one company is not even a size eight for another one. Right. So what are we technically judging? an imaginary number, right? Right. Yeah. So, and in our heads, we know that these numbers mean nothing, but we don't care and we get completely sucked into it. In fact, you know why they started glamour sizing? Why? Because statistics show that when women think they wear a smaller size, they buy more clothes. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably true. Yes. Well, it is true because think about it. Like, have you ever been upset with the size of your body or gotten, had to put a bigger size on and. Well, yeah, but that's before I understood that there wasn't a standard size. Right. You know, I, I didn't like the fact that I went from a six to an eight. Right. But then I realized, oh, this brand, I need to wear an eight and that, that brand I can wear a six and some brands I can even wear a four. Right. So you have a very healthy relationship to what sizing means and you understand that there's a, there's no standard and that it really doesn't mean anything and I think a lot of women cerebrally get that but they mm -hmm. still let this emotionally get to them I mean I've had very intelligent clients of mine I had one once who was in the dressing room and for the first time she fit into a 10 and she said I know this isn't really a 10 but I don't care I'm wearing a 10 and this meant everything to her so we know in our brains that these numbers mean absolutely nothing they have at their completely arbitrary yet we still judge ourselves based on it and we get down on ourselves when we're not a certain size and it's sort of the equivalent of saying I know that unicorns don't exist in reality but I'm going to beat myself up for never seeing one 
That's basically what we're doing to ourselves. It's like, we know this isn't real, but I'm still going to like base my value and my worth as a human being on what the size label that I wear is. And the truth is that not only is there glamour sizing, but um, and is it, it has like a somewhat new name to it in the past 10 years, but glamour sizing has been going on for years. And, you know, the thing is that we could blame the fashion industry and tell them, well, you should be glamour, you should be glamour sizing, you should be setting a standard, every company should have the same measurements, blah, 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 blah. The truth of the matter is, having been in this business long enough and having worked as a fashion designer for 10 years, it's actually not as easy as it sounds. And while I do think the fashion industry has a certain responsibility to their consumer, I also think women have a certain responsibility to themselves. And I think that women have to realize that they're allowing one little thing that has absolutely no grounding in reality, there's nothing real about it, define whether or not they're worthy worthy of being alive, whether they're worthy of being loving towards themselves, whether they're worthy of taking up oxygen on this planet. And that is just so absolutely sad. And it's not to say that I haven't had crying meltdowns in dressing rooms. I have actually cried in a dressing room when I went up two sizes from what I thought I was. And I called my acupuncturist and I called my trainer. I mean, I was having a complete meltdown. There was a lot more going on than just the size that I was wearing at the time, um, some health issues. But my point is, I'm not saying that I'm above any of this, that I don't get upset by the size of my thighs or that I'm, I'm wearing a larger size than, than I wished I did. But my point is that at some point we have to decide whether or not this is going to be the thing that ruins or makes our day. And until we do, no matter what the industry does, we're always going to be owned by the way that they're giving us fashion. And to the fact that we are judging ourselves based on something that doesn't even exist in the first place is so absolutely sad. So the fact that my my friend who was upset about a size triple zero, she's allowing all of this, all the things that are wonderful about her disappear for something so absolutely stupid. It's so absolutely dumb and such a huge waste of time. And it's not to say that you will never not have these feelings again if you're decided that you're gonna, you know, this is not gonna be something I allowed myself to be judged by. But you have to be willing to just say, okay, I feel this, but I'm not gonna let this own me. And, um, and realize that you're so much more than just the size that you wear. So I just, I can't with, with these people getting upset. I can't with you getting upset about whether or not you wear a size 8 or you wear a size 0 or you wear a size triple zero or you wear a size 24. It doesn't matter. And the fact that if you're going to let yourself be judged and judge yourself based on that, then you are just whittling away at everything else that makes you an amazing human being. So I just had a soapbox today, Kathleen. I did. I just am so upset about the fact that women, I'm more upset at women than I am about fashion glamour sizing. And it's not to beat them up, but the fact that they'd be willing to do this to themselves, that really just upsets me beyond belief. So that's, that's, I, ha I had to mention that. So what's, so what's your thought? Anything on, on J. Crew doing triple zeros? I, I agree with you. I mean, I think fashion is going to change over time and things are going to repeat and they're going to try to cater to a crowd to get the money, you right. know, but well, we can't fall for what the trick is. We can't fall for, you know, re-identifying ourselves with what size we wear, right. you know, and just do away with who we are. Right. And yeah. also what people have to realize is a triple zero is technically a backlash to what we've done to glamour sizing. So <laughs> if you think about it, I remember I was interviewed about this on Good Morning America and they said, okay, you know, so four, okay, so here's, a. when I was in high school, I was the same weight I was when I got married. When I was in high school, it was a size eight. When I was in, in my 30s at that same size, it was a size four. So clearly fashion's been skewing sizes. Right. So what's going to happen as they glamour size more and more? Then eventually, they're, and I said this in this interview about 10 years ago, I said they're going to have to eventually go into negative, negative numbers. Negative sizes. <laughs> right. So really, a triple zero is probably what a zero was 20 years ago. Right. So really, these that's where the numbers are so arbitrary. It doesn't mean anything. So who cares? Call it like red, orange, yellow. It, call it 246. It doesn't matter. But So the bigger issue is that we as women put our worth 
on that on that actual number so I'm not saying that this means you give up on it all and you pull up a table to the buffet and you just let yourself go to pot <laughs> okay and this is not what my point is or that you you know it's about acceptance and it's about saying this will not be the thing that determines who I am and how much I love myself so love yourself right now and if you can't love yourself wherever you are right now you're not gonna love yourself at the size triple zero anyway so you might as well start with working on self-love first so that's all I have to say this week forget about the whole number thing for God's sakes go out and love yourself be accepting of yourself find what works best for you and realize that these numbers have absolutely no meaning anyway and adopt a healthier attitude like my wonderful intern Kathleen has too. All right, everyone, this is Bridger Rays. Uh, I hope that was helpful for you, at least somewhat inspiring as I got out of my soapbox. Uh, you, if you have a question for me, you can visit me at BridgetRays.com. You can visit my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash style expert. Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, all of that is at Bridget Rays. Have a great week and I'll talk to you next week.